Hello and welcome to our daily service. As we begin another week with all the opportunities and all the challenges ahead, it's wonderful to know that God never changes. He's our loving Heavenly Father. We begin with some words from Zechariah recorded at the beginning of the book of Luke. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. We praise you, almighty God, that you never change, that you're the God of redemption, the God who's loved us through the Lord Jesus Christ and called us to yourself so that through him we can call you our Father. Keep us truly grateful and bless us as we meet together in Jesus' name now. And we pray for your name's sake. Amen. There's so much to thank the Lord for, and we're going to join together now in a prayer of thanksgiving. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and redeemer of all. To you be glory and praise for ever. From the waters of chaos you drew forth the world, and in your great love fashioned us in your image. Now through the deep waters of death, you have brought your people to new birth by raising your Son to life in triumph. May Christ your light ever dawn in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. This week we're looking together at Paul's prayer for the Ephesians, and I'm going to read from Ephesians chapter 3. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. When I first started working at St. Ebbs, every Friday evening there'd be a prayer meeting mainly with some older saints, now with the Lord. I learned a great deal from their example in prayer. There was Eleanor, who would always begin by praying, Dear loving Lord. And those words spoke of a deep intimacy with Christ. It, it was as if he was there with us in the room. Or Daphne, who, although she suffered a great deal in her life, was full of thanksgiving in her prayers. Or Harold and Sybil, whose prayers contained detailed information. They knew the name of every child, of every mission partner, and their birthdays. And that knowledge revealed a constancy in prayer. Well, this week, we're going to learn from the Apostle Paul, as we look at this prayer, the prayer to the Ephesians. And we'll notice how he begins his prayer, where it's directed to. He says, I kneel before the Father. I wonder if we take that for granted. That we become, we, we approach the, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and we're allowed to call him Father. That is an amazing privilege. You won't find it in any other religion. The Muslims have 99 different names for God. Not one of them is Father. As one theologian has put it, Father is God's Christian name. It's only because of the Lord Jesus Christ and his death for us on the cross that we can approach God in that kind of intimate way. In ourselves, because of our sin, we should shrink away from him in fear. But because Jesus took our sin upon himself and gives us his righteousness, through faith we can approach in Christ with confidence, calling God our Father. Human fathers, of course, have their failings. Some are bad. But God is the perfect Father. So as we draw near, we know he's not a distant God, indifferent to our requests. He's the perfect, loving, 
Heavenly Father, who delights to hear us. When Jesus taught about prayer, he didn't focus on bodily posture. He didn't give detailed instructions. The main focus of his teaching on prayer was that we should remember who we're praying to. Our Father. So much flows from that. And then just briefly, notice where his prayers are focused. He continues, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. So easily our focus in our prayers is on our circumstances, maybe our job, our health, our finances, and those are entirely right and proper things to pray about. God says, uh, Jesus said, when you approach your father, you can pray for your daily bread. Nothing's too small to bring before your father. But Paul's focus is not simply outward circumstances, but notice your inner being. The real you, your character, your heart. There's nothing more important than that. Maybe at the moment our circumstances might be very challenging and it's right and appropriate to pray about our circumstances. But in these hard times, let be pray, let's be praying above all for ourselves and for one another that God would be bringing change in our inner being, in our characters. And we'll see tomorrow a little bit more about what Paul prays for our inner being. But for now, let's praise God that we can approach him as our Father. Loving Father, we praise you that we can call you by that name. May we never take it for granted. Keep us truly thankful. Amen. We're now going to pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, which of course begins, Our Father. Together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We continue in prayer. A prayer for these anxious times. Heavenly Father, our ever-present help in trouble, our fortress and our God, calm the anxious fears of all who turn to you. Give strength and healing to those who are sick, and courage and skill to those who care for them. Grant wisdom and clarity to those in authority, and humble us all to call upon you, that we may be saved not only in this life, but also for that which is to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And together we pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by your governance, to do always that is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song also begins with a prayer that God would tune our hearts to sing his praise.
feet from sinking, I shall see your lovely face full of rain, blood wash how I'll see. Oh, God bless you this coming day, this coming week. May you be conscious in all things that if you trusted in Christ, God is your loving Heavenly Father. A closing blessing. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. And may the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and those you love now and always. Amen.